it's really important to use a development path lens because what it helps us do is think about the synergies and trade-offs between our priorities. So we're thinking about the system as a whole instead of isolating or siloing off one set of priorities. If we build up a particular road, a particular set of highways, how does that affect uh, lower income people that might not be able to afford uh, to commute by car. You know, if we uh, put in a green space, how does that affect public safety at night? You know, these are questions that we need to ask um, of any initiative we put into place in cities. The, the real crucial idea is starting to look at the, the context of all our decisions. We, we fancy ourselves independent decision makers with total control over our own behavior, but I think it's really important to start looking at the, the underlying fabric of, that, you know, that, that uh, runs through all of our decisions as individuals. And that's in essence what a development path is. It's cultural, it's economic, it's social, it's all of these trajectories that um, are really deeply interwoven with one another and structure the options we have available to us, what we think is appropriate culturally, what we think is reasonable in an economic sense. So a development path is this series of, of interwoven trajectories that are really deeply imbued with inertia. In other words, you know, we typically keep on doing what we've always done. It's hard to make changes. Um, and unless we give some serious thought to where those sources of inertia are, when we try and deal with sustainability, we're just tinkering around the edges. We're just doing small superficial changes instead of altering fundamentally the structure of our communities. Changing a development path is ultimately a, a social movement. It is a cultural transformation. But at the same time, it can be triggered in small ways and perhaps large ways by giving careful thought to the way that our economic decisions impact our social values, the way our, our cultural decisions impact the environment. Community, for instance, can change its land use planning, it can alter where you know, uh, commercial buildings are relative to where people live. Um, and in the past, we've really based that on Euclidean zoning. So, separating uses. We want our houses over here and we want our commercial buildings over here and never the two shall meet and you must drive between them and it takes 40 minutes and this kind of thing. And we're transforming that notion of land use and zoning to be closer to smart growth principles or, or form-based code where we can mesh uses and create these compact, complete, livable communities that simultaneously enhance environmental benefit plus uh, social benefit like public health, from walking and livability, aesthetics, um, local food production, all of these things all at once. Rebel Stokes District Energy Program is one example of, of taking steps towards a sustainable development path. Rebel Stoke is a, a community of about 8,000 people in uh, the interior of British Columbia. Um, air quality in town was absolutely horrific not so long ago uh, because of this beehive burner. And uh, all across the province, communities were doing away with them. Um, in Revelstoke, the decision was made to use that, the waste that would have been combusted to fuel a district energy system that now services um, a number of, of city buildings and others. So simultaneously reducing emissions, enhancing uh, air quality and public health, certainly growing tourism because you know people would come to Revelstoke and go up the mountain and look down on you know an LA style air quality problem in a town of 8,000 in the, in the British Columbia mountains. And they're now considering expanding that district energy system to residential areas of the town and really transforming the energy pathway of this community in a way that is sustainable, long-term, um, relies on local resources and actually creates a more resilient community that's protected from volatile energy prices, energy markets, geopolitical challenges around the planet related to energy. So it brings back some of that energy independence while enhancing social and environmental aspects of the community. This is the whole essence of sustainability, is considering the synergies and the trade-offs between or amongst all of our different priorities. You know, our lives are complicated, our communities are complicated, and uh, we can't just hive off one priority, one little environmental, for instance, objective and deal with it in isolation. It has implications for quality of life, for the way communities look, feel, for equity, for all of those different priorities.